This was me last year in September. This is where I looked the best I've ever looked in my entire life for a bodybuilding competition. And since then, I got fat. So here we are, just over three months post-competition prep, and we are officially 18 kilograms heavier than my lowest stage weight of 59 kilograms. And this is what I'm looking like right now. Let me show you. Oh yeah, and here are the stats. Look, it honestly really doesn't look that bad. In really, really good lighting, you can still see my abs. And sure, you know, a lot of people might look at my physique and still think it's really good. And that's completely understandable. I honestly really don't mind the chunky look, but the only thing is, is that I gained weight a little bit too fast. And obviously having Asian genetics, my cheeks tend to get quite puffy as I gain weight. And because I gained weight so fast, they're puffier than they usually are. And actually that's one of the main reasons why I do want to start this mini cut now because I do feel a little bit self-conscious when I look at the camera and I want to be in a better position before I start my year-long bulk where obviously it's going to be a lot more controlled. Was this much weight gain intentional? Yes and not really. So for those of you who don't know, after a competition a lot of bodybuilders do fall into like this period of depression and eating disorders because they can't control their eating. Obviously yes there is no more restrictions when it comes to food because you're not competing anymore but mainly it is because of the hormonal imbalances because your body is pretty much in a state of starvation and it's never full. Like it's really hard to explain what it feels like if you've never experienced it before but that indication to tell you you're full doesn't exist. There's honestly like a bottomless pit in your stomach and really the only indication that tells you to stop eating is pretty much your stomach being in pain from not being able to fit any more food in your stomach. And so obviously if you're eating heaps you're getting a lot of weight, you're potentially trying to fix it but you can't and you're seeing very obvious physical changes compared to when you were very lean, it is definitely going to affect you mentally. So I've pretty much been in a recovery diet pretty much ever since I did finish my competition and Yes, I could have been way more adherent, but I may have scheduled a bit too many meetings with my friends straight after, as you can see. But when it comes to a recovery diet, you know, it really depends on the individual, how disciplined they are and how long it takes for them to actually recover. I think my last bodybuilding competition, it took me like about six months for me to finally feel normal again, pretty much. And in terms of my recovery diet in general, like I said, I could have been a lot more strict, but I didn't really care too much. I think a lot of that stems from me being in this position before and knowing that it really is just a temporary period. And so rather than letting it get me, I still ensured that I ate my protein, my fruit, my vegetables, even if I ate over, and then I just made the most of it inside of training. And honestly, like, when are you able to order the entire menu? Not a lot of the time, so I really just made the most of it. But now that I've had my fill of food, it's time to look like a fitness influencer again. Not because I ran out of money from buying too much food. When it comes to weight loss, there are two main approaches that you can take. The first one being a more sustainable approach. Although yes, this may take a little bit longer, your food can be a lot more flexible as you will have more calories to play around with while you are in a calorie deficit. This is really good for beginners or if your general goal is just weight loss because you're still able to maintain your social life and majority of the time you should feel fine. The other approach is an aggressive mini cut. It's definitely not sustainable at all. So I definitely wouldn't run this for more than six weeks, especially if you don't have proper guidance, but it is a great way to quickly get down to a baseline so you can spend more time in a longer growing phase. And yes, you will have to be a lot more strict with your food as you'll be in a much greater deficit and you can feel like crap majority of the time. I'll personally be taking you through my six week mini cut approach where I'll be getting myself down to a 10 to 12% baseline. Of course, everyone will have different opinions and methods when it comes to these approaches, but this is just what works for me. If you do follow along though, here are some things that you probably should keep in mind. You don't have to be experienced, but if you don't already have a good relationship with food, this is probably an approach that I wouldn't recommend at all. And I definitely would recommend you know how to track calories. I will be providing a very, very basic meal plan for you to follow along, but if you haven't already, then definitely learn to track calories because then you'll be able to customize your own meal plan and eat the things that you want to eat and also tailor your macros to suit whatever you need to do, such as focusing on training, whatever your protein intake is, and also, you know, balancing your hormones as well. 
The third thing is if you feel terrible during the cut, then obviously feel free to back out. You don't have to go through the entire six weeks. Feel free to go back to maintenance and you can always try it again later. Muscle loss is inevitable, especially when you are cutting, but as long as you're keeping your protein intake high and you're still training really hard, you're able to progress or even maintain your strength, then a lot of the time you really don't have to worry about anything and the muscle loss isn't noticeable at all. For my last six week mini cut, I was able to maintain all of my strength and I didn't really feel any side effects at all, apart from, I guess, like hunger and low energy for the last two weeks. And probably the one thing that I would recommend the most is probably just get yourself a coach because honestly, this will just take the headache away from everything. It takes all of the guesswork away. And obviously, I guess, depending on the coach that you choose, you will learn a lot from it. I don't want to toot my own horn and I guess it is, yeah, like I said, up to you who you choose for coaching. But one of the coaches I would recommend is working with my team at Panda. I've been personally coached by them since 2016 and they've pretty much taught me everything I know today about nutrition and training. So definitely check them out. Anyways, now with all of that out of the way, let's get started. So in terms of nutrition, the goal with the aggressive fat loss phase is to lose anywhere between 1 to 1.5 kilograms per week. So when it comes to how much of a deficit that you should be in, I would recommend around 30 to 40% below your maintenance calories or 1,000 calories below your maintenance. I'm not going to teach you how to track calories in this video, but if you don't know what your maintenance is, then just use any calorie calculator online. Just put in your details and it'll give you an estimated maintenance. Just keep in mind that this is just an estimate. You know, everyone is different, even if they have the same stats. So if you really want to know what your true maintenance is, then it is up to you to figure it out by testing it. But once you do have your estimated calories, then choose that 30% or 40% below your maintenance or that 1000 calorie deficit. I'm personally going to be on 1400 calories, which is a lot more than what I recommended above, but that's just because I have experience and I know that I'm able to do it. I really wouldn't advise anyone go below 1400 calories, especially if you don't know what you're doing. So I'm not gonna be providing any advice for anything lower than 1400 calories. And again, you should probably get a coach if you want to do this safely. But once you have your calories, then these are going to be the calories you're going to be sticking to for the next six weeks. And then when it comes to training, <laughs> Nothing really changes apart from maybe potentially reducing the volume just to better manage fatigue. The goal inside of training is still to pretty much train to failure or as close to failure as possible. If you're able to push yourself to barely maintain your strength or even better, like be able to increase your strength during these six weeks, then muscle loss will be kept at a minimum. If you are unsure of what to train, I do have my Train With Me programs where you will have access to an app that will allow you to track your training and follow along with my training program that I'll be doing for the next six weeks. I have actually enabled a seven day free trial for this cut, so you can see what it's like without having to pay anything. And if you enjoy it, then you can subscribe to it and you'll have access to all of my training programs that I'll be doing at the time. And I definitely do really appreciate the support, so thank you so much if you do decide to subscribe. And as for cardio, you know what? Honestly, I hate cardio as much as anyone else does. So it is completely optional. Don't worry, I won't be doing any cardio as well. Any extra cardio that you do is completely up to you. You can either decide to track it if you want or you don't have to. I am personally going to be doing 10,000 steps per day. I honestly don't really like doing steps either, but I do find that it is really important for general health. So what should you eat for weight loss? Yum. If you're not tracking your own calories, then here is a very basic 1400 calorie meal plan where I've tried to make it as easy as possible without having to buy too many ingredients. For this meal plan, I've allocated the macronutrients to have a higher protein intake for satiety and prioritize fats over a higher carb intake for better hormonal balance rather than training performance. Again, this isn't for everyone. So I definitely would still encourage you to learn how to track calories so that way you can change these macronutrients to suit your needs. For breakfast, I make a very simple protein yogurt bowl. Start with 250 grams of light Greek yogurt, one scoop of your protein powder of choice. I'm personally using Muscle Nation's vanilla ice cream. I find that this flavor sweetens and mixes with the Greek yogurt really nicely, and I am sponsored by them, so if you want to give it a go, you can get 10% off all of their products using my code, Lee. Then top the bowl off with 100 grams of banana and 20 grams of melted peanut butter. If you're on slightly higher calories, then I would look at adding extra carbs like fruits such as mango and blueberries, and you can also add honey as well. For lunch, I would have a pumpkin, feta, spinach, and chicken salad, which is something that I've had during my bodybuilding competition prep. All I do is add 150 grams of pre-washed packet spinach, 200 grams of roasted pumpkin, and reduced fat feta cheese. I always have cooked chicken on hand to help me hit my protein intake if I'm ever struggling, so I just slice it up and add 100 grams of cooked chicken on top as well. Then finally, I use 30 grams of 99% fat-free balsamic dressing. If you're on high calories, then you can add extra pumpkin. I find that pumpkin is a great low calorie food that is super filling, so this can be very, very helpful to keep you full. And finally for dinner, I am having a cheese and chicken omelet. I just crack four eggs into a bowl, season it, and add 35 grams of mozzarella cheese, 
90 grams of pulled chicken, and then cook it up into an omelet. As for the carbs, I'll also have 100 grams of apples on the side to end the night to keep me a little fuller. Again, if you're on higher calories, then I would look at adding either a sauce like ketchup or barbecue onto the omelet, or have more apples as they're very, very filling and they'll keep you full during the night. And that's pretty much about it. Over the next six weeks, I will be tracking my weight every single day and getting my weekly weight average just to see where everything is at. You can also download the same spreadsheet that I am using on my website. If you find that you're not losing weight, don't worry, you don't need to drop your calories. You will be losing body fat no matter what the scale says because you are in quite an aggressive deficit. This is why we kind of look at a weekly weight average because it gives you a better representation of your weight. Sometimes you could go for like one to two weeks without seeing any weight move at all and then you'll have a very big drop the week after. Just keep in mind that if you are in a deficit, you will be hungry and especially with such an aggressive fat loss phase, you may find that you have like no energy at all. Don't feel like you're forced to power through these six weeks if you can't handle it. You can always go back to maintenance, chill, try again later, or even try a different approach. Honestly, there is no one size fits all when it comes to fat loss. To keep you accountable, I still will be uploading my weekly check-ins just to show you where I'm at in my six weeks. And you can also expect to see shorts about general weight loss things like how to track calories on a night out, low calorie food vines, and I guess like general glow up things like the hair tutorial you guys have always been asking for. But yeah, anyways. I've been getting no sleep because I've been working on this from scratch non-stop for three days since coming back from my short holiday and I'm freaking tired. Also, I am finally releasing my show day vlogs that I recorded during my bodybuilding competition. So you can look forward to that. And yeah, I still don't really know how to end these videos, but love you guys and I'll see you in the next one.